Hello. Hey, Amber. Hi, Mar. How's it going? <laughs> so like I meant, I was talking to Amber a little bit before. I'm experiencing a power failure over here in Montreal. So <laughs> I'm on my phone upstairs so that I can actually get reception. But aside from that, I'm surviving. What about you? Yeah, I'm, I'm good. It, but it looks like the weather is fine where you are. So why did the power go out? There's a lot of like work happening. I'm wondering if maybe a crew hit something. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. that's, what, that's what I'm wondering because um, I looked on the, the site for the power and the power, they have a map and they say exactly like where there's power failures and there was none listed. So I'm thinking it might be something like that. Yeah. Anyway. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. hello. I don't know if you got new glasses. No, these are my old clunkers. I actually had an appointment and I didn't know that when you set appointments in your phone that you actually have to select to be notified or else it doesn't notify you. So I never got a notification because silly me, I thought when you put an appointment in, it automatically notifies you. You missed my eye appointment. <laughs> Oh, wow. So that's a PSA for those of you that use your phone to remind you of stuff. You have to tell it to remind you. Yeah. Oh, wow. Did you know that? No. Yeah. It's weird, right? Well, I guess, I mean, I would think that it would just, the default would be that it would notify you. Yeah, no, it isn't. Not on my phone anyway. I had to go in and change all my things. Wow. Annoying. All right. So, um, hi, Gwen. I'm good. Thank you for asking. Hello. All right. So what are we doing today? I also just want to say that, um, you know, as usual, I'm having internet problems. Um, so I might have to leave and come back because that seems to kind of reset things and make it work again, but we'll just, uh, you know, try it out. Yeah. Just be patient with us. <laughs> Thank you. So let me get my other camera in here. So I'll switch there. There we go. Okay. So they're nice and clear from what I can see. All right. So I'm going to be making these seashell cookies today. Um, I'm doing a lot of mermaid stuff lately. I don't know if you can tell by the nails. This is like mermaid month for me because the, the new Little Mermaid movie is coming out next month. So I just wanted to make some videos um, to kind of go along with that theme. So oh, okay, because you did tell me that your nails took longer than the cookies. So give them their glory here. <laughs> Put them up so everybody can enjoy them. Look at how pretty your nails are. Appreciate the nails. I spent way too long on these. Very, very nice. So did Olive and Sydney want you to um, do a, you know, matching mom and daughter set? Oh, yes. They always, yeah. They want nails like mine, but their their nails are so tiny <laughs> that I can't yeah. really do these types of nails on them yet. But when they get older, I will be doing their nails because that'll be good practice for me. Okay, so let's get into the cookies. This is um, do I have the cutter here. Ann Clark cookie cutters shell, maybe like almost three inches across. Did you did you squish it? No, that's just how it is. Oh, I thought maybe because I, you know, it looks. They might the have one... another. They might have another shape. Yeah, because uh, the one I in my head is a bit rounder. Right. So... Yeah, I think this is a different. Because I think I know the one that you're talking about too. Um, and then the con there's sprinkles in this recipe. This is the confetti cookie recipe that's in my book, Cookie Canvas, and it's also in the Cookie Art Club. And then I don't know if, oh, my little thing is gone. Anyway, it's in my, the pinned uh, Facebook comment. If you're watching on Facebook, you can just click over to the Cookie Art Club. It's also in the description if you're watching on YouTube. So you can see it there too. The book? There, I just put it up. Well, oh, thank so you. I was talking about the link to the to the club, but that's oh, okay. too to have the, the book. I'm looking here I don't see anything yeah I had it in the chat and then when I left it disappeared oh, I don't know if you can see the chat from your phone I'm looking for it in the banners but I'm not seeing it oh yeah I don't think I put it in there that's oh, okay. my bad. 
So this, um, I flooded this yesterday with just flood consistency icing. And my flood consistency is between 15 and 20 second count. And that means when you take a scoop of icing and drop it back into the bowl, it takes about 15 to 20 seconds to be completely smooth. So that's what I did there. And then I just let that dry. So now I'm going to take a thicker icing. This one is more like a medium consistency where it holds a soft peak. So I'm just going to go in and pipe some texture on these shells. So I'm going for like more of a realistic looking shell that you might find at the beach. This is a decorating tip too. It's probably one of my all time favorite things to do is collect seashells. Oh yeah, I always think of you now when I do beach stuff. I love it. Do you have uh, beach plans yet for the summer? Yeah, yeah. the mm -hmm. house has been booked for an eternity. If you wanna get first pick, you have to book. Oh later, yeah. You know? Right, we booked a little bit late this year. So we got a we got a hotel room. We're going to Lake George. We haven't been oh, there in years. Yeah. That's very nice there, especially for the kids. It's a nice destination. Yeah, I think they're gonna love it. They went there when they were little, or at least Olive did. So when I do these, um, I don't know what are the texture in the shells, I want to leave a little bit of space in between each one. Cause you want it to kind of have like that wavy look to it. Mm -hmm. the, and I'm the, following the, the shape of the, the cutter. So you're using the scallop at the edge as kind of like your width guide. Yes. And just tapering these as they go in. Your piping bag, it's pink. It's stained with food coloring. Oh, Cause I was <laughs> sure the icing was going to be pink and now it's white. <laughs> This is a uh, one of the Wilton reusable bags. Yes, yes, I I like those. Uh, it's like a uh, feel soft in your hands. Yeah. Yep, but it's stained with my ah. pink food coloring. Oh, it makes sense. I mean, it's such potent stuff. Yeah. So, guys, I'm trying to look at your comments here. I'm on the phone. Like I mentioned, I'm having a power failure, so I can't see as well as normally. Where I go to Prince Edward Island generally, but this year we're going to New Brunswick, which is also very nice. A place called Shediac. Hmm. Collecting seashells, yes. And I also like sea glass. Oh, yeah. So just using my scribe tool to shape these a little bit and smooth them out. Oh, thank you, Rhonda. Oh, hello, Kim. Must be nice seashell beaches in Hawaii. Oh, yeah. Sally, that is an air fryer. Oh, that's what's behind you? Okay. I thought it was a microwave. Did Sally say that? What did Sally mm -hmm. think it was? She said, is that a little oven? Oh, Yes, I've had trouble getting back. I had some dental work done and some, took some time off. And so I'm just, it's not long that you get out of the habit of your work routine. I know. And just in general, we've been doing fewer of these live streams. It's just so much... <laughs> So much work to do. Well, it's so to much to with. juggle, right? The family and <laughs> yeah. uh, our sanity. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so Amber, your head is slightly, just be mindful. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing your hair kind of. Thank you. Sally's enjoying your piping. Thank you. Jennifer is Fort uh, Ticonderoga is saying Fort that's Ticonderoga, a, yeah. That's a place for your girls. 
Oh yeah, we'll check that out. Thank you. Nancy, yeah. any any advice for correcting fast drying royal icing? My icing always looks cracked after correcting it. Oh yeah. So um I mean the one thing that I say is to, you know, take a look at the recipe that you're using because if you have I use a pretty good amount of meringue powder. It's about um a half cup and two tablespoons of meringue powder for two pounds of powdered sugar. Um, and more meringue powder in the icing makes it, gives it more of an elastic consistency. So you have longer to work with it. Also, it could be, you know, the weather. Yeah, that's and it. And now like it. if you have your heater on, just right. like in the winter, right? It tends to even be worse. Yes, definitely. Yes. So there's all kinds of factors, but usually the one thing is the, the recipe that will help you out the most. I'm just going to add a little bit more here because, you know, on, on a shell, this bottom part here sort of almost hangs yes. over. Yes, Nova Scotia, we, we uh, drive by Nova Scotia. I haven't yet booked a place in Nova Scotia, but yes, I'm, I'm sure the beaches are, are just as beautiful mm. right next to New Brunswick. Alaska must, yes, Jeremy's talking about Alaskan beaches. I'm sure they're, they're also very nice, even if you can't be really wearing a bathing suit on one of them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so this needs to dry for at least a couple of hours. This has been drying overnight, so I know that there's no danger of poking through my icing when I paint. So Amber, is that white yeah. or is it ivory? This is white, um, white. but I put vanilla extract. Oh, uh, yes. Thing, so it makes it a tiny bit off white, but that's nice for a shell. I, yes, that's what I, well, that's why I thought you'd maybe mm. colored. So now we're going to use edible paint, cake paint from Sweet Sticks. Um, this is, I've used these three colors mixed together to get this sort of peachy, peachy shell color. These come, these are liquid. So they also sell powder that you can add alcohol to, to make it into a liquid, but this is already liquid in the bottle. So if you want to dilute them further, is there a product or do you, do you yes, not? I, mean, I, I use just uh, vodka to do it, but they also make an activator, which has alcohol in it. They make an alcohol-free one, which I haven't tried, but heard is good. And then they make the activator, which has alcohol in it. Mm -hmm. um, but I just use vodka because it's cheap. Yes, and it yes. works fine. And you can use it for several things. Yes. Gwen's saying you make it look so easy, oh. Sally. I swear you pipe these sections so perfectly that a computer graphic software would not be as good. <laughs> goals. Um, Sam Samira is saying her dark icing, dark colored icing, is taking ages to dry. Oh. You've probably got too much color. It's just, it's very easy to go overboard with the dark colors because you want to, you know, you want to get your colors dark if you're making black or red. Um, so first thing, what brand are you using? If you're using, if you're trying to make black, I always recommend Wilton Color Right or Chef Master. Americolor is another good one because they're very concentrated and you don't need to use very much to get super dark colors. You also want to make your dark colors a few hours or even a day or two in advance so that it darkens on its own. So every time I'm making black icing, I make it dark gray and then I just let it sit and eventually it, it turns black or close enough to black. So Kitty, you arrived late to the live stream. So just to let you guys know that these lives are available for replay after. So once this is done, just wait a little bit. Facebook will load the video or if you're on YouTube and you can just rewatch it from the beginning and get all the, the details of how yes. she decorated the cookies. So just starting at the top edge, adding my color. 
So Karen's asking, uh, she uses the sweet sticks for the metallics, but mm -hmm. why are you using it for, um, for this, like just a regular color instead of let's say Chef Master or Americolor? Okay, so I do use gel food coloring, Chef Master or whatever brand for painting, but that gives you more of a watercolor look. So it's translucent. Um, but these, these paints are opaque. So it's more like working with acrylics or oils. Mm -hmm, it's full coverage. Yes. So that's why I like to use these. Um, and you get more, you know, the, to try to get this color in a gel is going to be very difficult. You might end up getting pitting because you're having to go over so many times, yes. right? Right. Did you, uh, Kathy's asking, did you thin your liquid color with vodka or use it right out of the bottle? So this I've been using all day. So I keep having to thin it because it dries out. But when I'm, when I first use it, I just use it straight from the bottle. So here's a question from me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so let's say you've made too much paint because this stuff is so expensive. Yes. What, what do you do? Do you just let it dry and kind of have it there like a watercolor paint palette? And you could reactivate it later or do you just wash it off? I reuse it. So you can just let these dry out and then you can add more alcohol or whatever liquid you're using. And just so kind of like it. a watercolor palette that you would just, right? Use yeah. water. Yeah. So, you know, you could let it dry and then cover it, put it away. Just use it again another time. So now I'm just using, I took the, I rinsed the color off my brush. So now I'm just blending blending it a little bit so it fades. So this is not exactly a quick project. <laughs> but it's a labor of love. It's one of those, um, you know, it's a, it's a project that you're doing for somebody like as a gift or something, mm -hmm. right? You're not making a hundred of them, but if you're right. making a birthday gift or maybe Mother's Day's coming up. Yes. Melissa, I think that's for powder colors. I'm not sure what you're referring. Do you know? I'm think? not sure. Yeah. So Kim now is, I dip, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, Kim is oh, saying that yeah. Master Black Diamond is a good yes, black. That's diamond. a good one too. I just dip my brush into um, just plain clear vodka with mm -hmm. no color to help blend this a little bit mm -hmm. instead of using water. Cause if you use too much water on your cookie, it's going to start to dissolve the icing. No, Terry, she's saying that that is the actual cutter. It's not squished. So and it, might be, it could be an old one. Like I have cutters. I've collected cutters for years and years. So it's possible that it, it could be an old one that they don't have anymore. And Amber loves vintage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Kelly is saying, what's the name of the paint you're using? This is from Sweet Sticks. Um, and it's cake called Cake Paint. And she made that color herself. like she Yes, right. I mixed red, yellow, and brown. Hello, Nutty Nana from Ontario. Hello. Sally is also all looking and she only saw like a regular. Mm. Well, I'll see if I can do some digging later and find where I got this cutter. So I'm going to do another layer here, kind of following the shape of the shell. So Don is asking about airbrushing this design instead of, um, of mm. painting. Yeah, you, I mean, I would, I don't know how you would get this color exactly in airbrush. Uh, copper, it's called. Copper, okay. I have to give you a, a, a name. Copper is what comes to mind. Mm -hmm. Ready out of the bottle color. Yes, copper would be a good one. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, you can do the edge. And then if you had some kind of a, a guide right here to like block. Yeah. Shield, right? Like, to yeah, that's what I mean. Yes. A little shield. So when I was doing this, I just looked up, 
you know, pictures of shells. So that's what I usually do when I paint something. I just have a picture of it nearby. How does the Sweet Arts Black compare to the liquid? Have you tried the that uh, Sweet Arts Black? Camille is asking. Oh, um, the Sweet Sticks Black, I have, yeah, I use that for painting. Um, if that's what you mean, Camille. I, I think she's maybe talking about the powdered food color. I think maybe that's what she's referring to as like to color your icing. Oh, okay. I don't know. Yeah, I've only used the... Um, well, you know what I used to use is, what's it called? Crystal Colors brand powder. They have black powder. And I used to mix that in with, with my gel. Okay. So yeah, powders are good because they don't change the consistency of your icing at all. Yeah, exactly. So Christy is saying, I, I, uh, I seem to still have pitting with vodka. Is it my icing recipe or should I try Everclear or a different mix? Um, so you might, you can try using a different alcohol. So Everclear or just a, a stronger vodka. So something that's at least 150 proof. Cause I've noticed that even when I use like a regular vodka, it doesn't work as well. So a stronger alcohol could be the recipe. It could also be that you're over mixing your icing and there's lots of little air bubbles in there. Yeah. The chalkier it gets from mm -hmm. over mixing right? The more kind of fragile. Yes. So Karen is asking, do you only use this for painting or have you used it to color your royal icing as well? Like mixed it in? Oh, I haven't used it to color the icing. I don't, I mean, I don't think there's really a need to because the gel colors work so well for coloring icing. So Beatrice, uh, the color coral in food color tends to be pinkish and the mm -hmm. copper color tends to be more orangey like yeah. Amber's using the you know colors are all different by the manufacturer their version of the color so mm -hmm. from what I've seen coral tends to be on the pink side yeah I think of pink when I think of coral but that would make a nice color for a shell too. It, really, any color, right? Yes. You can yeah, they so, do. They come in all colors. June is saying the sugar art is great. No bad taste. Powder can be messy, though. She says. Oh, okay. Warda, Warda, I like your work. Thank you. Jeremy said he got a request for liver shaped cookies to celebrate a transplant. Oh, wow. I mean, I think I, I've seen uteruses even. Oh yeah, all kinds of organs, yes. Yes, an anatomy set. My daughter would love that. She has one of those um, toys that has like a transparent body and you can take out all the organs and everything. Have you seen those? Uh, I haven't seen what you're talking about. I saw actually a frog though. That you Oh, yeah. She had the frog too. Yeah. And which is like, I think it's a like cute, you know, instead of sacrificing an actual frog for yeah, you know, right. how many of these kids are actually going to become physicians, right? <laughs> All right, and then I'm going to paint these little, I don't know what you call this part. Yeah, I'm not very good at uh, shell anatomy. Yeah. <laughs> Lisa is asking, is there a huge clientele for this type of uh, pastry, cookie artistry? And would the products be expensive because of the detailing? Oh, yeah, they're, they can be expensive. Um, you just have to, you know, find your market. Obviously, this is really detailed work takes a long time. So it's for a very special occasion. Like maybe you would just do a little gift box of like six cookies for this to keep the price 
you know, reasonable for somebody. Um, but yeah, it's, I don't sell my cookies anymore. I think it's, it's hard to find customers for that type of work. But if you, you know, if you do specialty cookies for weddings or birthdays, um, yeah, then. If, I think if you're making cookies to sell, you have to kind of like, and you want to mass produce, it's a different kind of style that you would do, you know? Mm -hmm. You want to mass, like, you know, generate more revenue, just stuff that's a little bit more simplistic. Right. I mean, like, I think it's nice as a hobby too, you know, like it's Absolutely. more, if you um, are just looking for something creative to do and you're not selling the cookies, like this is just such a great way to, do something artistic that you can share with your friends and family. Well, I think this is like better than so many crafts because you end up, you make your thing and then you put it like, you know, just stockpiles in a box. Like it's right. weird to show up at a party with <laughs> actual canvas or with, socks yeah. it, you know, right. This you, you can bring it to the party and everybody admires it and then it's eaten. So it's not sitting. I mean, mine, yes. mine sit around for a bit. Yes, but everybody, you know, you kind of steal the show when you get to the party, right? Yes, right. So, so, yeah, what I'm saying is this type of artwork, you don't have to think of it as like, how am I going to make a bunch of money making cookies? It's For me, it's like a fun absolutely. art um, hobby kind of thing. But I've noticed that the like bakeries that offer these types of cookies, they also offer really like simple, like dipped Oreos and cake pops. Um, so, you know, kind of offset that. Your head out. Oh, sorry. Something that's cheaper to make and more affordable for a customer. And then they can have a few like very special cookies with that set. So Eileen, you can um, watch the replay. The video will be up after and you can she'll, you'll get all the explanation of the process. Sally added a link that's similar to the shape that Amber's using. If you oh, guys thank you. So I'm going in with gray. This color is just gray right out of the bottle. Sweet Sticks cake paint. I'm just going through to add a little more dimension on the shell. So Kim is saying um, bad news, but don't freak out. So she's doing well, but it's her oncologist is, is moving away and she wants suggestions for cookies to make for her other than hearts and boobies. Oh, <laughs> oh that's, oh yeah. Um, I mean, flowers are just flowers. Yes. Yeah. So fun to make and receive a beautiful, colorful, bright, you know, it's like new beginning a flower. Like there's always a new flower <laughs> blooming in a, on a plant or whatever. To me, it's like, that's the perfect thing. It's just so nice. Right. right. Camille is loving your seashell. Thank you. Do you like to add glitter on your cookies, Amber? Kathy's asking. Sparkly. I like to add luster dust. Um, glitter, I find that the edible glitter is a little too fine and kind of gets all over the place. So I like to use luster dust that I can paint onto the cookies to add a little bit of sparkle. But if you're going to be using glitter, like the disco dust glitter, that's not like really edible, right? Officially, I think it depends on the brand. There are like some brands mm -hmm. that have come out with, but it's not as disco dusty. Do you yeah. know what I mean? It's yeah. It's a different product. But after I do the shell, I want to show you something else I'm working on that has luster dust. Jill saying it's beautiful. Thank you. Sally sold on the hobby. We know Sally. <laughs> <laughs> Donna's saying she gives her cookies away. 
and people say they're too beautiful to eat. Yeah, isn't that nice? I just really love that you can give these away and it's just such a special gift. That's why I started doing, one of the reasons I started with cookies was because I could ship them all over the place and share them with friends and family. All right, so there's our shell. Gorgeous. That last touch that you did, the kind of grayish color in the middle, really, um, it needed it, you know, like it really yeah. finished. Yeah, it just gives it a little more dimension. All right, let me drag this other project over here. I can. So this is still mermaid theme. Um, Kim, uh, a man can receive flowers as male, you know, I mean, I oh, think that, yeah, but you know, I mean, flower, spring flowers is I right. Think still, still I do, nice. Yeah. I mean, I get that you maybe would want something with a little bit more of a masculine. Feel oh, yeah. Sure. It. I wonder. Butterflies. That's butterflies. true. Butterflies. Do you know, maybe he's got some hobbies that you could learn about and make something related to the hobbies. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, yes, men can also receive flowers. Okay, so I don't know if you can tell what this is. This mm. is going to be a mermaid tail. Mm -hmm. Okay. I made it with wafer paper. Um, I cut it out and then I wet it so it got, like, gummy and flexible. And then I have it sitting on a piece of wax paper on top of a rolling pin just to make it give it more of like a, a curve to it. And oh, is it dry now? Cause it popped off. Yes. Fortunately it popped off. I was worried that it was going to get stuck forever. Um, so that's going to go on a mermaid cookie that I'm working on. How many did you make? I, well, this is only for one cookie. So there's two big pieces and then two like little smaller pieces that I'll stick on there. This is very, very much an experiment. Like I didn't uh, know experiments what are doing. Fun. What's that? I said experiments are great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. I had just I have so much fun like doing all these kind of strange things. Um, so this is also sweet sticks brand. This is luster dust. Um, ocean blue, Tiffany blue, and pink gelato are the colors. Oops. Very nice. Did you use that when you made that other mermaid that you did like last year? Because it was, um, I yeah. think he liked that too. Yes. You did? I always use, I mean, or maybe it was, because I started using sweet sticks maybe about a year, a year and a half ago. Okay. Might have been crystal colors. Okay. But they, they, they remind, it's very close. Jeremy's saying, since the doctor's a man, boobies then totally. <laughs> So this is the Tiffany blue, I think, right? Yeah, Tiffany blue, which kind of looks like a little bit like teal here, doesn't it? Which, I mean, I guess Tiffany blue kind of is looks sort of like a pale teal. So I just added my uh, alcohol to this 151 proof vodka. I don't, there's nothing to be sorry about. I don't know what sorry, Kim. Oh, birds. Yeah, that is also a oh, nice suggestion. Birds, yeah. And they, and they can be so like, you can make a fantasy kind of bird and have it be very, um, mm -hmm. you know, a white hospital coat and stethoscope. Okay, Lisa's asking, how do your cookies retain their shape after baking without puffing up? That is um, a lot, it has a lot to do with the recipe and also the way that you handle the dough. So I have like a very small amount of baking powder in the recipe to prevent it from puffing up and spreading. I also keep the dough cold while I'm working with it. 
Um, but if you go to my website, there's a whole blog post about what how to get cookies to keep their shape. Uh, the website is sweetams.com. Thanks, Jeremy. What's the shelf life of the cookies? Talita is asking that. Once they're wrapped up, so I heat seal my cookies, put them in a cello bag and heat seal it. It's um, like three to four weeks. You can also freeze them. I've frozen my cookies for up to three months. Um, there, Cheryl's suggesting a, white, a lab coat in the stethoscope. If you Google, I actually saw a very nice design with a stethoscope on a heart. I don't remember it, but if you Google it, like it's very nicely done, whoever designed it, you oh. can kind of hate that. Okay, and then I'm just gonna put a little bit of pink, or pink gelato is the color. Pink gelato, very nice. Have you tried to dilute that and put it in the airbrush or no? I haven't yet. I'm, I'm scared about clogging it for some reason, but I know that it's, it's possible to use it in there. Cause that's what you do, right? Well, I don't have that particular product, but when I have a thick consistency, I'll take, I, I leave the needle kind of exposed in the back and I pump the needle. So the needle, every time you pull it back and push, kind of gives the, the liquid a little push, you know, and you can mm. kind of get it out. So if you wanted to. Okay. So there's our little mermaid tails. Very nice. <laughs> Thank you. Can't wait to see the finished. The finished um yeah we'll see how so, out. so for people watching a wafer paper is really an affordable decorating you know a lot of stuff is quite expensive you can get a stack of that for for really affordable and and experiment and try amber yes. i don't remember what how much this was but th th there's like a pretty good stack yeah. in this. this is from amazon Wait. I bought mine too, like from Amazon. I remember it was like a hundred sheets for really, it's not expensive. Yeah. And recently I bought, but I haven't used yet. I got the actual like round wafers. Do you know, like, it's like a stack of like mm -hmm. little round ones. And I thought they'd be good to do little transfers on, you know, like, because um, yeah. they're ex like a good cookie size and you can mm -hmm. maybe do a little flower on it or something. Sometimes you need it to have a little bit more, you know, support in the back. Yes. So fragile, the royal icing. I remember. <laughs> it seems like an eternity ago, but yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Very nice. Oh, gosh. Um, I th Camille just asked me this the other day, and I had, like, a whole list of, like, the biggest cookie and the most complicated cookie. But it must be all, like the Cookie the News, you did some really hard stuff. No, cookie, cookie the News was, that was intense. But I mean, it really challenged you. You must have like seen an improvement because you're only going to improve when you challenge yourself. Yes, right? and I can do portrait cookies now. Like I can make faces on cookies because I did so many for Cookie the News. Yeah. So that's it. Like so it's, Definitely uh, the portraits are the most complicated and take the longest. Yeah, I think you can. Yeah, that's what I do. And then put the the wrapped cookies inside like a an airtight container into the freezer. Don't, um, it's not ideal if you've got airbrush on your cookies and you freeze them. The mm -hmm. condensation and, and uh, painting in general, I find, can be a little tricky if you have condensation. Yeah, because that's just sitting on the surface. Yeah, so yeah. be mindful of that. Mm -hmm. That can be an issue. Also, if you added pearls, like any kind of sugar pearl, also the condensation can cause the pearl to melt, mm -hmm. which would be annoying to have elements get screwed up. Yes. Well, yeah, you do. You still want to have a little bit in there. I mean, I like to put a little baking powder in the cookie because it just gives it a nicer texture. 
you want to have those little air bubbles in there to kind of lighten it up. Oh, thanks, Karen. Yeah, I did those. Um, they kind of were mermaids, weren't they? One of them. So Sydney was a version of like a sea creature because her she was really into Luca at the time. And then Olive was Elsa. Oh. And then I did myself as Belle. That was for like a Disney collab that I did with some other Instagram cookiers. Thank you. <laughs> uh, that, they're in Australia. Oh, gosh. Yeah. But they ship so fast. Like, I've gotten my stuff probably in a week, maybe a few days more, but. Uh, again, eh, you know, you Fondant do. might get a little sticky. Experiment. Because. Yeah. Well, not all fun and it's created equal. The best experience that I've had is with satin ice. I find it dries well. So you want to experiment because if you're, let's say, making marshmallow fondant, might not be so good. Yeah. Fun. Oh, the painted cat. Yes, with the little flowers. Oh, yeah. That was a fun one. I love that. <laughs> How is your kitty? Mine? Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, she's great. She's hanging in there. <laughs> because how old is she again? She's like. She's, um, she, I think she was born in 2005. She was my husband's cat first. So I haven't known her for her whole life, but I think it's 2005. So what is that? 18? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's up there. Yeah. Like, what, what difficult. Idea. The one about the hardest cookie. Oh, ever done. Um, hardest cookie. I mean, uh, really, sometimes I'll go through my old photos and I'm like, I didn't even remember that I made that. <laughs> so, so it's hard because I've done so, so, so many. Like, I don't do a whole lot of painting. Um, I mean, now you've put me on the spot. Like, I can't even like, for, like, like it's like the filing cabinet. No, no, it's hard. so hard. I know you're gonna have to, I go, have to kind of go through my old stuff and look, you know. Yeah. But um, yeah, I can't answer. Not because I don't want to, just because I just can't think of the answer. Yes. The face one or the moon. I'm guessing that's you, Amber. Because I. Don't um, yeah, I did what? Like, I think I've done a a moon probably two or three times. Those are always pretty difficult. You, yes, you can put cornstarch. Sometimes, though, it can, like, depending if there's any moisture, it can kind of uh, create, like, a cloud mm. on. I don't know if you've ever used it. Sometimes, like, you know, the surface has to be 100% dry for, for it to not mm. kind of get stuck and make patches. So just test it out if you're, you know, don't make your whole batch of cookies and then put them in the freezer. Just test one or two at a time. Thank you, Teresa. Yes, I like the stiff icing. I find that it is, it's in, It's like you're sculpting a little bit to a degree. Mm -hmm. Hi, Shanna. Okay. Those are from a hundred years ago. I yeah. love those, yeah. Hi, Julie. Oh, thanks, Jeremy, for the reminder. Of freezing um, both. Like, I freeze the dough, and I also freeze finished cookies. Jeremy, so, my, um, apparently, is my new marketing manager. <laughs> Here's my book. Good job, Jeremy. Cookie Canvas. It's on Amazon. It's on all the book selling websites. And also, like, it could be where, you know, in your local bookstore. It's not in all physical bookstores, but... Um, they are in some, you know. And that would make a very story. nice Mother's Day gift. Oh, yep. So if you missed today's project, this is what Amber worked on. So you guys can watch the replay. She ex just walks you guys through step by step the project. Oh, I have an older live. I just see the picture here. I wasn't going to plug it, but I just see it here. Let oh, me yeah, there it is. This is a beach theme too. You could kind mm -hmm. of have the seashell. See, this is kind of like a, that's a fun and decoration there. The little uh, sand dollar. That's cool. Beach theme is just 
Like these would be really nice wedding favors. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know what you could put in the bag is uh, pearl like six slits. That's a good idea. You know, just to yeah. fluff up the bag mm -hmm. a little bit. Mm -hmm. well, that was fun and nice, Amber. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Thank okay. you. Thanks for watching. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. So like I mentioned, you guys can watch the replay if you're just joining us. All right. So we'll see you next time. Bye. Here, let me put this on. You're going to have to end it. I don't have a button now. Oh. Bye, guys. <laughs> I got it. Bye.